Today we are at the Center for Beverage Education here at OSU, and joining me is the director and also assistant professor, John Burge. John, if you don't mind, first tell me a little bit about the Center of Beverage Education. Well, obviously we're the School of Hospitality and Tourism Management, so beverage is a big part of that program. So we teach everything. We teach everything from wine and culture, uh, wine and distribution, wine and production, as, lo uh, as long as other fermentation sciences, distilled spirits, beer as well. So. Well, and, and over this season in Oklahoma Gardening, we've kind of visited some of the different wineries and breweries. Tell us a little bit about what you guys see as the potential for Oklahoma's industry. Well, the, the industry as a whole is very vibrant, and uh, Oklahomans as a consumer obviously embrace uh, beverages, wine, beer, and spirits. It's a thriving uh, industry right now, and uh, obviously with the uh, craft beer and uh, distilleries, we're starting to see that build up in the area as well. And obviously you have a student population that has an interest in some of this as well that you're educating to take on some of that leadership later of, on. Of course. So tell us a little bit about, um, let's get into the holiday season, right? Okay. <laughs> That's what we're really here for. Yeah. So I wanna to talk to you a little bit about, we've got a lot of holidays coming up. Um, if I'm entertaining, what do I serve with your traditional ham and turkey and some of that stuff? You know, uh, that's a really good question. I get asked that all the time. And when I look at this plate, I, I see a lot of things going on. There's obviously a lot of flavors, but you know, the, the main part of the plate is the ham and the turkey. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of us, we like to, to, to brine those. And uh, because of that, that process involves salt. So uh, obviously salt and ham will be a little bit salty. To counter that, mm -hmm. we'll offer something that might be a little sweet, like a Riesling here, or even a Muscat, which is even sweeter. And uh, Oklahomans love those sweet wines and that works really well. Uh, if you wanted to contrast, you know, something with a little bit more acidity like a Sauvignon Blanc would work well as well. Okay, so is that sweetness sort of kind of like that idea that we put, sometimes we put soda or honey on our ham to kind of cut that salt a little bit? So Ex you're doing that same sort of thing. Exactly, it, okay. exactly. Okay, so um, does it matter red or white or you can go either way with that? Y you know, so it's very vers versatile, uh, the holidays. Uh, so white wine wise, uh, the wines that have a little bit of residual sugar, uh, like a Riesling, a Muscat, a Chenin Blanc, mm -hmm. tend to do real well. Uh, Pinots for reds or a lighter style like Gamay do well. Okay. But we also like Cabernet, so really anything goes during okay. the holidays. Okay, well after the main course comes dessert. So can we use the same wine that we had with our main course for dessert or something different? You can. Uh, I actually like to do a dessert wine with dessert. Okay. And uh, in that case, we've got, and I'll be honest with you, I tasted these in class and they were the, the uh, crowd favorites this year. Okay. Uh, and so it's a grape called Muscat. And uh, there's uh, two different styles. This one is a sparkling Muscat. This one's actually a pink Moscato. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, it's got some really nice fresh fruit, raspberry flavors, uh, strawberry pop. It and goes, bubbles then? And <laughs> bubbles. So, you know, uh, you, you can't go wrong with that. And this one is actually a muscat from uh, uh, Baume de Venise, uh, okay. which is an area in the Rhone. Uh, but this one has actually been fortified a little bit, so it's got a little extra kick. But, what does uh, that, yeah, what's that mean? It doesn't have vitamins in it, right? What well, so <laughs> when we do the chemical equation, sugar plus yeast equals uh -huh. alcohol and CO2, okay. when, they, when they do that, uh, they arrest fermentation by adding a little bit of uh, distilled brandy. Okay. And uh, so that's what so makes it. Got, so it's got that really fresh, great, uh, juice flavor, okay. uh, real fresh, fruity, but then, like I said, a little bit of kick to finish off that. All meal. right, so we're, we're opening another bottle for dessert. Mm -hmm. um, when we open a bottle, do we need to let it rest or breathe, I guess? I mean, I don't know what what's the secret here. Yeah, so your more expensive bottles probably need a little, they do benefit from a little bit of uh, decanting or, or opening up, but for all practical purposes, for uh, most nine times out of 10, uh, you just need to open. We don't have or, to wait. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, and I know there's so many more um, varieties and types for, and, and packaging really for, um, to select from. We've got corks, we've got screw tops and boxes. Is one better than the other? And let's also talk about price point. You know, so, uh, well, first off is price point. Technology is uh, caught everyone up to the 21st century and, and everyone's making really good wine. Okay. So uh, there's great wine at all price points. So don't be afraid to 
try some of the more expen inexpensive uh, varieties. Uh, but also, don't be afraid of different kinds of closures. So we've got cork finish, or, which are uh, the most traditional, but we've got uh, Stelvin closures that don't have the cork, so there's never any possibility of cork taint. And then there's actually this one that's very environmentally friendly. It's made out of cardboard that all breaks down. This is three liters, which is actually the equivalent of four bottles there, so it makes it real convenient. Okay. And the other nice thing about these vessels is that uh, once they're open, uh, there's no oxygen that can get in, so they can stay good for up to a week, which oh, is okay. really cool. Okay, so that's really, uh, if you're having a bigger group come over, that might be a, a better way to serve that sure. also. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you so much for this. And I know, you you know, if people have more interest in this, that you guys host um, several, a couple of different forums each year. Can you tell us about the beer and wine forum? Yeah, so we've got craft beer forum coming up in April. Okay. It's April 6th, and uh, there we bring Oklahoma's best, best craft beer breweries together along with consumers, and uh, we have educational sessions uh, for everyone. It's a great event, great turnout. We look forward to having everyone there for that. And then next year we'll have the wine forum, which we, same thing, bring in some of the best wineries from all over the world, okay. along with consumers to, to bring them together. So you rotate those forums from year to year. So this spring we're going to look forward to the beer forum yes. coming up. And for more information, is that on your website? It sure is. Excellent. And tickets will be available soon. Okay. Thank you so much, John. You too. Appreciate Thank it. you. Happy holidays. You too. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.